Hey guys, this is Jeremy again from Church Mag, and we got another episode of Minecraft Theology. I want to take you guys inside, and it's been a little while since we've been in here. There's a lot of changes that have happened. Ooh, it's time to sleep. If you notice, my audio is a little different. That's because my microphone that I normally use is acting up. So unfortunately, you're going to have to suffer with a little bit poor audio quality for a little bit. But here we are. Oops, I might have done that. Oops. We'll hopefully fix that here in a minute. But there's a lot of changes. You'll notice the pathway is finished. That's new. We are trying to protect ourselves here. Um, it's not fully lit up, but we can work on that as we go along. Um, we did this project last time where we had a bunch of sheep in here and we had a hole. Um, that's now changed. Um, it was just a temporary setup at the time until we had some more of a structure. I will say one thing bad about this is that we there is a glitch that happens that she can escape through the fence and so just know that um, if you are hoping to cram a place full of sheep um, that some of them will get out and just know that it will be a risk you have to do. Um, I am purposely killing off a lot of our sheep because Eric Dye is over in Italy and this server is in New York. See, you got out and you shouldn't have. Um, Eric dies over in Italy, and I'm trying to reduce as many mobs as possible. Yeah, I want you, please. Um, and the reason that's important is for every entity that's on here, um, the computer has to have an AI for that person. And so it just means a lot more information is getting transmitted, and so a lot more information needs to be sent over the internet. And if it's a ways away, then it's going to just take a while to get to it. So the more entities we kill, um, it's better for... For Eric, for Chris, um, if you don't know Chris Wilson, uh, he's a staff writer at Church Mag. He's jumped on. I think he's the one that does the flowers. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's been here. This is new for the chickens. The eggs are out of control, let me just say. Oh, there's a lot of baby chickens. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this one yet. Yeah, we have a lot of chickens. That's okay. So anyways, we have a goal today. The goal is we need to get a, a diamond pickaxe, and then we need to go get some obsidian. I know where the obsidian is. I have no idea where the diamonds are. So we're going to go on a little trek today, and while we go on the trek, um, we will talk a little bit about stuff. Um, one of the things I know I goofed up with is last time, or the, when we first started getting together and talking about this stuff, I said, hey, this is going to be really personal and you're going to enjoy this and hopefully we can offer you something different than we normally do with the other video stuff. And then what did I do last time? I made it impersonal. So this time I kind of want to talk to you. We had discussed about... Hmm, I, got you. I got a mutton. Um, we had talked last time about just the idea of what gamers could be for Christians. Um, but I recognize I didn't give much of a history for myself. So I figured I could talk a little bit about the history of where I came as far as church technology. Um, what I was really getting into for just in general life. And um, how that kind of impacted my ability to want to do church technology. How I got to ministry. So I actually started doing, I'm a pastor's kid. And so that probably you can probably diagnose me with a ton of stuff just right there. Oh, this is new. This might be a lot quicker than I thought. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm a pastor's kid, and so I grew up in the church, uh, Baptist church. My dad was a uh, free will Baptist, who, which essentially just means we weren't part of the Southern congregation as far as Southern Baptist. Um, and we were a pretty small church at the time. He pastored, but it wasn't a paid profession. It was just something um, that he felt called to do, and so he served the church. And so I grew up, basically every weekend, we would get Bible studied, we would be Bible quizzed, just sporadically. Oh, hello. Oh, I don't like this. This is not good. Especially with a lot of there. Um, let me get the torches up. I don't know why I have eggs still. Um... For me, one of the big things was just the idea of being able to integrate my spiritual life into my um, normal, everyday, I went to school kind of life. And I think that that was important for me. Gotcha. 
Um, and so I grew up with what does it mean to be Christian? Everything, everything I did. And really, I had to evaluate what that meant for me. We'll come back and get the stuff, but I'm really now because I'm just about diamonds today. Where is that at? That makes me nervous. Um, so, so I would just integrate that into. And so I was in choir. What did that mean to be a Christian and to be a witness to people? I was um, trying to be academically achieving, um, to get a good grades, and to know what I wanted to do in life. And so all that stuff factored in. Um, and coincidentally, I ended up getting a degree in computer engineering, um, but going into ministry, which was something my father initially was against. Um, he said, you need to provide for your family, you need to make sure you can take care of them. Oh, I just want to show you guys no one else is on. Um, but he came around to the idea very quickly. He's my biggest supporter whenever I was a missionary. Um, I used to work with uh, Youth for Christ. Youth for Christ did youth ministry. Um, and so I did a lot of ministry with teenagers and working with them and trying to figure out how I could do that best. Um, I started out in working in a small town um, as a volunteer whenever I was in college, but then quickly grew into a full-time ministry where I was raising funds and um, working again in another small town, but then uh, moving out to Colorado Springs, working in Air Force um, base for military teenagers, um, but still essentially doing everything I had been doing before. Um, so there's a lot that goes behind there as far as getting into ministry. Um, but church technology has always been at the heart of what I wanted to do. The reason I got into ministry, and I think I've talked about this before on the podcast, too, nice. um, is that I had a youth pastor that believes in me. Um, he was my youth pastor, and then I volunteered for him, and I didn't know what that necessarily meant. But he gave me the ability just to say, okay, whatever you want to do, go for it, and I trust in you. And that was really cool to kind of have to own that. Um, I felt really empowered by that process. I really felt like he valued me in that process. And I felt, I think that that's probably one of the reasons I got into ministry in general. Um, and that's when I started doing church technology stuff, um, setting up computer lab for him, trying to get the best audio visual stuff going, um, which meant a whole lot of different things that I had never done before. And it was really just kind of off the cuff stuff. Um, I didn't have a mentor that invested in me. I had to figure all this stuff off my own. Um, and so there was a lot of fun stuff that went into that. There was a lot of headaches. Um, I had to figure out budgets as a volunteer and by no means should I have been responsible, but he graciously did that for me. Oh, jeez. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think that that was big for me. I bet I could kill him. I really want to no, risk it. I'm not going to risk it. Um, but I think that him believing in me was huge, and just to be able to, oh, I really do need this, though. Please go away. Ooh, I can kill. And... Okay. That was more risky than it should have been. Um, just that he, I have this natural affinity for liking everything that has to do with church technology. Um, I love doing the relational stuff, and if you guys hear me on the podcast, I am a counselor by trade now, um, a clinical counselor working towards my licensure, um, doing a lot of stuff with that, but I live in this world where um, I need that relational aspect, it's not something I ever wanted to do in my life, but I eventually did uh, find that that's what my calling is, is to do re relational ministry. If you ask me in high school would I have ever actually done anything like I did with ministry, with counseling, I would have said no, definitely not. I have a difficult time asking a girl out or making friends when I was in college. The best way I made friends was to follow my roommate around, and whenever he introduced himself to someone, he felt obligated to introduce me to them, too, and that's how I made friends. Um, I was just so socially awkward. I still probably kind of am. Um, but it was really just that's how I kind of got invested in things. But there's this nerdy side of me that loves the math. I mean... Uh, the, my ebook by the numbers has been released and it's just a whole bunch of data research. Um, I love the statistics of everything. Um, so I really kind of get into the geeking out of everything and understand the programming language. I have, like I said, the undergrad in computer engineering. Um, have done a ton of audio stuff and my dad sold projectors and TV screens. And so I just have a, a natural background with that, which I think is just one of those blessings that God has given me that allowed me to do what I do. Um, 
and really just to serve the church. And what I did initially was I just wanted to set up a youth ministry tech stuff, um, but quickly found that there was a lot of people asking the same questions I was, and I just kind of shared that information with people. Um, now I find myself just wanting to encourage people, and I might not have all the answers. I don't know if Meerkat is the best solution for you. I don't know um, what kind of camera would be best to film the baptismal stuff on. I haven't been keeping up with it like many people have. Um, but I do know that oh, there's a lot of people that are hurting, and I want to help them because they're my people. I see church technology people as my people, if that makes any kind of sense. There's a lot of redstone that I'm kind of just leaving here. I'll have to come back and get. Um, and I think for me, the big thing about all this is I just want to be able to serve you guys. And I don't know necessarily what all that means. Um, but I'm trying to do my best. So I say all this to come back to, that's why I was in church technology. Um, that's my heart behind everything. And to kind of come to the gaming full circle of me being personal, um, I was a gamer big time. I Some of my memories of childhood are playing the original Nintendo and um, sitting with my brother. I was probably six and he was four or three. And my parents would just tell me how I would say, hey, do you want me to help you finish this level? And then three hours later, we had to turn off the computer or turn off the system and I was playing the whole time. And so I love video games. I love... I'm good at the first-person shooter stuff, um, but the violent stuff I'm not as into anymore. I have them, but it's just not me. I love Minecraft. I love the ability to have the redstone stuff, so you'll see me do a lot of redstone. Um, in fact, that's the whole reason we're here today is because of the redstone. Do I have shovel? I do. Yeah, the way. Um, and so you'll see me do a lot of redstone stuff. I love the redstone aspect of things. It's just complicated and so there's new ways of doing things. I am by no means going to do tutorials. Um, there's other people that can do those really well. They do this full time for a living. I'm probably going to replicate a lot of stuff that they do. I have zero design aspect, so just know that that's going to be there. Um, and this plays into a lot of other gaming. Really? I went the whole distance and nothing? All right. Um, but I love the technical aspect of it. So games like SimCity, I love because you just have to think about how are you going to organize your city. Um, one of the biggest memories of my life was hearing about my grandfather pass away. He, he died suddenly from a heart attack. And I was extremely close with my grandfather to the point that I considered my best friend. You know, we, I just have a very close family and the one thing I remember about that is I had been we had been with the babysitter and my parents had left for some reason, didn't know why. And so I, I was just playing some video games and it was alright, it wasn't I wasn't get, doing anything I wasn't supposed to, I was just playing some city. I just remember my parents coming home in tears and telling us and me having sat around Sim City and um, I was building this huge metropolis just trying to see how massive and efficient I could get it. And then just hearing about my grandfather dying and that's one of the things that's really stuck with me is just that it kind of highlights just different points in my life. Not to say that it defines me. Um, I know where my definition comes from and my faith and everything like that, but there's a lot that goes into this. So I think for me that's huge. Um, this is really kind of how I got into gaming. It's just wanting to solve puzzles. And I think that for me a lot of gaming is I just get to keep my mind into what's going on in the world of the game. And I'm going to still get lost. Um, but it's just one big puzzle. I get to tease my brain. I do a lot of relational stuff all day, every day. And this is just a different way for me to kind of let loose. I get to think about problems that are mathematical, not relational problems that have hurting hearts every single day. And it's just, it's really a self-care for me at this point. Um, other games I do like. I love sports. I'm a football fanatic. Um, I do not like pro as much as I do college. I'm a huge Ohio State person. Um, but I love playing football on Xbox. Um, Xbox 360 is my system right now. Um, but I don't necessarily play it. In fact, I don't even play it once a month sometimes. Um, it really just kind of depends on what, what kind of mood I'm in. Ooh, that's no bueno. Um, so it just depends. 
Oh, what kind of things are going on? I am so lost already. You guys are probably screaming at me. No, what are you doing? You probably saw Diamond Toy back there. Um, but I think that I think for me, games is just one of those things where it's a great thing. And I have a three-year-old son. I'm kind of excited to see what's going to happen with him. Um, he's already at a stage where he likes to watch me play games. We sometimes will fall asleep and he'll just to unwind, watch a game, and then we'll lay there for 20 minutes afterwards and just kind of giggle and chat. Um, but he calls it, hey, watch game, watch game. And he's recognizing that sometimes dad plays games, and so that's cool just to see that interaction. Um, if it never gets to that point, that's fine. I know I'm going to be very stingy about to what games he can play um, for most of his life, um, and I don't want it to be something he gets addicted to. Um, but we'll see. So that's where I'm at. I love the sports games. I love some city. Um, there's apparently a new game out called Cities that I love watching randomly. Um, but I just love doing things. So that's kind of where I'm at with all this. Um, let me walk around, see if I can find some diamonds and, and keep an eye out things. I will come back as soon as I find something, so I'll see you in a bit. Look what I found, right here by a whole bunch of lava, and I just happened, I know that there's diamond that happens around lava, and sometimes I've noticed that if there's these patches of dirt, there's diamonds here. I don't know if that's accurate, I just noticed that that's the case whenever I'm going on hunting. Oh, please be more than one. Oh, please be more than one. Oh. No. Oh, good, yes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is great. This is great. Yes, yes, yes. All right. One of, one of the things I want to do is to... I, I, there was a whole bunch of reads, and I didn't show you guys this before, but I was planning a whole bunch of reads. I want to do a whole bookcase. And to be able to do the bookcase, I need a whole bunch of reads and to make a whole bunch of books. This is not right. Um, which means that I am... Ooh, my gold. Um, which means that I need to uh, automate the system essentially. I, I'm going to do a lot of redstone, like I said, and one of the redstone things I'm going to do is I'm not going to get that now. I'm going to wait until I have a chance. Um, yeah, so it's here. Good. Uh, which way? Oh, this way. Um, I need, I want to do a lot of redstone with the reeds, and so we're going to set up a reed thing. Um, I have all the tools except for a comparator, and the comparator requires one single quartz, and so we need to go to another for that one single quartz. I obviously don't know where I'm going. Can I get a lifeline, please? Um, so we're going to go there to get one of those ends. I'm following a guide that originally was done by Mumbo Jumbo. His design does not work now. You know what? We're going to have to stick this up. We can't keep running out. Um, so I'm going to use a compact version of that, so we're going to do that. So, so that'll be the next big redstone thing. Um, I do want to show you one more thing as well. Uh, but I'll show you getting the actual obsidian as well. So I'll, as soon as I get to the top, I will come right back. All right, guys, here we go. I'm going to make the diamond pickaxe. First diamond pickaxe on the server, I believe. There we go. La la. I feel like I should do uh, some kind of a... Maybe we'll wait until the do a screenshot when we have the actual nether built. I also have my uh, flint and steel for whenever that time comes and we need to light it. Um, where is the thing? This one? One of these branches off to the side and there's a humongous crazy drop. Is this one? Nope. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I need to so one of the big things I want to do with the automation is uh, just get as much redstone kind of action that we can. Is it this one? No? 
um, just to see what kind of crazy things we can do. Um, just to be able to kind of go crazy with it. I don't want to. I don't want to have a thing where we have a million and a half raids sitting in a chest. So that's not my objective. But I do want it set up so that. Um, I do want to set up so that, if need be, I can um, simply get everything I want out of the system. So, get enough reads to be able to do something great. Is this where I was before? This is where I was before. I don't need to be here. Actually, I could do a water bucket here. Just take all the slot up. That's what I'm going to do. Alright, so let me go get the water bucket and I'll be right back. Alright guys, I officially have enough for another porter. I'm going to get some more to be able to do enchanting um, because we have the extra diamonds. But I'm going to go ahead and call it here. This is already way longer than the average seven minutes I was going for. So um, leave me a comment below. What was your life like? Do you feel like you have a similar situation as far as gaming? Do you feel like your story connects at all to mine? Um, even in the smallest of ways, was there ever personal moments where gaming surprisingly was a part of it, kind of like with my story with my grandpa? Um, I love to hear about it because there's, I think, a lot of things that can speak into this process. Does that? Nope. Um, that can play in the faith aspect of things. So leave me a comment on YouTube on the blog article, and I would love to see you guys next time.